yeah so today we'll see some questions from mechanics and basically these are questions i mean this first one is from centroid and the remaining ones mainly are from friction so that is that is the most important part here next time we'll be covering questions from the vibration free by vibration topic so this question this is a common doubt that i have heard from students so basically when we have a triangle like this the centroid comes out as if this total length is l so centroid comes out as l plus a by 3 or we can also write it as l plus b by 3 so it will be somewhere here but how does it come so we'll try to solve that here so basically we have this triangle and i have divided it in two parts the total length here is l i mean the base here is l and if we draw this perpendicular from the apex so we have two parts for this triangle a and b and so we have divided it like this and for these individual triangles we know the location of centroid so for this one from here it would be a by 3 and for the second one it would be b by 3 and we know the centroid it is given as a x is equal to or total area times centroid it is a1 x1 plus a2 x2 Now we just have to write this term a1 x1 and a2 x2. So let's say this area here is a1 and the second one here is a2. So total area, what will that be? So total area would be, let's say if I write just in terms of a and b. So a plus b by 2 or 1 by 2 times a plus b times h. That is the height here. And area of first triangle, so that would be half times base that is a times height that is again h and similarly for the second triangle sorry we'll have to take product of its location of centroid also so that is this part is a1 now x1 here we are measuring from this point let's say we are taking the origin at this left hand side point 0 0 so from here the centroid it will come out i mean at the distance here it would be 2a by 3. So this distance, the centroid distance x1 will be equal to 2a by 3. So 2a by 3 here plus a2 x2. So area of second triangle it would be half into b into h. And its centroid, so its centroid would be the I mean the distance because we are measuring from this origin which we have assumed at the left side. So it would be a plus the distance here that is b by 3. So a plus b by 3 for that. Now we just have to simplify this. So we'll have this 2 will cancel out. So we'll have a square h by 3 from first term and from the second term it will be b h by 2. So a b h by 2 plus this will be b square h by 6. Now on the right hand side we can further solve. So let's say we take h by 6 as common. So if we do that we'll have 2 a square plus in the second term it will the one 3 will come in the numerator so it will be 3 a b plus in the sec I mean in the last term it will be b square so we can further simplify it so we have h by 6 now we can write it as a square plus a square plus 2ab plus ab plus b square so this a square plus 2ab plus b square we can write as a plus b whole square. So h by 6 a plus b whole square plus a square plus a b. This is what we'll be left with. Now in this term also we can say further simplifying. We can write a plus b whole square plus if we take a as common. So we'll have 
a plus b now we can use this left hand side that is the area times x bar that is the location of centroid so a plus b by 2 times h times the location of centroid that is x bar now because a plus b is there on the right hand side in both both the terms so it will cancel from here and this one also so and h also similarly will cancel out and with this 2 if we divide so we'll be left with 3 so what we are left with now so x bar is equal to 1 by 3 a plus b plus a and if you see the value of a plus b here is l that is the total length of the triangle so basically we have x bar as 1 by 3 times l plus a so this is how we get the value of this centroid now what if you had measured the location of centroid from this side then the value would come out as l plus b by 3 that you can simply find by divide, I mean deducting this term from L. So L minus L plus A by 3 if you do. So you will obtain L plus B by 3. So this is how this basic question is there. You may have got the doubt or you may not. But I have heard from other students having this doubt. So we can move to the next question now. This one says a wardrobe mass 100 kg, height 4 meter, width 2 meter, depth 1 meter and it is symmetric about yy axis and it stands on a rough level floor as shown below. So there is a rough floor here and it is shown. Then it says a force P is applied at mid height on the wardrobe so as to tip it about point Q. So this is a point Q here without slipping. So the question is saying that we have this wardrobe here and the weight, I mean the mass of this wardrobe is given that is 100 kg and a force P is being applied on this wardrobe. The dimensions are given and then it says a force P is applied on this. So it is applied in such a way that this wardrobe is tipping about this point Q that is it is just about to tilt about I mean about to tilt about this point Q that's what is happening so it is saying what are the minimum values of force and the static coefficient of friction between the floor and the wardrobe respectively so we have to find out the value of this P and also the coefficient of static friction mu s between this wardrobe and the floor so here basically it is not slipping but it is the case of tilting but we can say it is about to about to slip also but before it can slip it is tilting so for that i mean this question is basically from gate mechanical and a similar question was asked in gate civil this year in gate civil's paper so it is, I mean, it's not that complicated. What we have to do, we have to check the equilibrium, the moment equilibrium about this point Q. So we have two forces. The mass or the weight of this wardrobe is acting downward at its center of gravity. And this force is acting at this mid level. So if we write the moment of these forces about Q, so let's say, sigma mq we are writing and in the equilibrium before it is tipping the condition of static equilibrium will be existing so this sigma mq this should be equal to zero so if we write the summation of moments about this point q so basically we have just two forces here the force p and the force due to the weight so the force p and the distance of this force p the total height of this wardrobe is 4 meter so the distance from mid height it will be 2 meter so p times 2 and this this moment i mean the 
moment due to this applied force it will be acting in the clockwise direction APC with respect to point Q whereas if we talk about the moment due to the weight so weight is acting here which is on the left side of this point Q so weight will apply an anti-clockwise moment so that will be balancing it so in the limiting condition when it is about to tip or about to fall this moment these moments should be equal so here we know this mass that is 100 kg and we will need to convert it in Newton because the force here is asked in Newton so we know F is equal to ma to find the force in Newton so mass is 100 kg and acceleration due to gravity because it is acting I mean the a here will be equal to small g so that is 9.8 one newton per meter square and sorry meter per second square and so this is the value of the weight and its distance from point q it will be half of this two meter so that is one meter here so we just have to solve this so this value comes as 981 this will be newton i mean newton meter and this meter will cancel out so we get p as 981 by 2 or 490.5 newton so that is the required value of p so that is one part of the question that is the force now we have to find the coefficient of static friction so this force p it is acting in this manner horizontally in the rightward direction on this block so friction will try to resist this so force i mean the friction will act in the opposite direction and in the limiting situation this p and f will be equal or p minus f will be equal to zero so we also know that this friction it is given as mu times n n is the normal force and because this block or this wardrobe is lying on a flat surface horizontal surface so n will be equal to w that is the weight so we have the value of p that is 490.5 and then we need to find out the value of mu and the value of n is equal to weight weight is 981 so from here we get the value of mu as 0 0.5 so this is the required value of static coefficient of friction I mean coefficient of static friction and this is the value of force which will just tip this wardrobe.